presented by Chrysler, the name that makes news in Watchmen. Have you wondered about those flying saucers? Then watch as Chrysler brings you The Search for the Flying Saucer. Starring Jack Cotter. Self-cornered. Yeah. Say, who do I see about a room? We ain't particular about strangers. What's your business? That might be my business. Suit yourself. Say, I don't want to make a pest of myself, but who do I see about a room? Might you be a newspaper man? I might. Come to find out about the flying saucers? Look, right now I'd like to find out about a room. Look, Mr. Uh... Crazy John. Just call me Crazy John. It's all right. Can't hurt my feelings. Nobody can no more. Yeah, they've done all they can to me. They? Now you're asking questions. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to check up on you. Oh, well, don't you think I won't either? Hey, wait a minute. What about the room? What do I... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was taking a sunbath. Well, don't apologize. I'm not apologizing. <laughs> Say, I just got in town. I can't seem to find a place, and I... Can't get any dope out of the old character. Could you tell me where I could find a room? You've come to the right place. Matter of fact, the only place in town. I'm Ginny Walker. Vic Russo. Hi. Won't you sign our guest register, Sure. Mr. How long do you plan to be with us? Oh, I really don't know. Twenty-five dollars a week, including meals. <laughs> Incidentally, I'm a terrible cook. Say, don't tell me your mother, Walker. <laughs> no, I'm a daughter. Oh. We bought this place about two years ago, and then mother couldn't stand it, so back she went to Chicago. What brings you to our fair city? Oh, a visit is that unusual? Well, it is a little bit out of the way. Are you a newspaper man? A good guess. <laughs> I don't know. About the only transients here in town are the reporters come to unearth the deep, dark mystery of our flying saucers. You know, if you'd seen one, that might not strike you so funny. Are you kidding? Oh, look, if, if you're here on assignment to look into all this, I... Look, I'm sorry. I, it's my fault. Look, could you show me to my room? I'm a little touchy. Yes, surely. Nice? Yeah, looks fine. Come on, I'll help you unpack. Oh, that's okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm a little tired. I had kind of a rough trip. I think I'll take a nap now, if you don't mind. Oh, surely. Uh, if you want anything, I mean, the bathroom's upstairs in the garage. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's swell. Says he's a reporter, eh? So I'll have to check on him. If he is a reporter, they send him to the right place to find a flying saucer. Don't do no good, though. He opens his mouth about a flying saucer. Whole town shuts up tighter than a clam. Right, Ginny? <laughs> How long you say you've been in town? I've been in town a couple hours. What paper are you from? I'm with the Daily Globe in New York. Say, we're interested in reports of flying saucers spotted around this area. Sorry, never saw any. Well, do you know anybody who has? Nobody. Sorry. Sorry. I've heard that 20 times in a few hours I've been here. Sorry, we can tell you anything else, but don't talk about flying saucers. Why? Say, why is everyone so scared to talk about something they claim they've never seen?
I'd help you unpack. How'd you get in here? The hairpin. Seen him do it once in the pictures. Worked fine. Now listen, old man. Now take it easy. I'm kind of fragile. What were you looking for? Nothing particular. Just checking. There's a law against this kind of thing, or doesn't that interest you? Not particular. You've been hipped on these flying saucers for quite a while, ain't you, Lieutenant? You did a thorough job, didn't you? Army grounded you for seeing too many flying saucers, didn't they? Army don't like their pilots seeing too many mirages like flying saucers. Next thing you know, you might bump into one of them saucers that ain't there and smash up a shiny new airplane. Keep talking. Fall through. Don't get mad, son. Had to check on you. Had to find out if you was on my side. Never can tell. You're one of them or one of us. One of whom? Them. Then what comes in on the saucers? Then there are saucers here. They've been spotted here. Man, they land them here. That's what they do. Over in the hill over there, they, they land them and then they pull them into a cave. Ah, huh, man, I've seen plenty. And the rest of the town? Can't tell. Some of them clam up because they're the ones that come in on the saucers. Well, the rest are just scared. They've seen him, but they're scared. Scared out of their britches. Why? Why are they scared? Oh, they got reasons. Real good reasons. Don't scare me. Hey, no more, they don't scare me. I've got something to show you. He'll knock the ice plum out of your head. You, you wait right here. Now, don't, don't you move. Don't you move. All right. Oh, hi. Hi. Didn't see you come in. <laughs> How'd you make out? Oh, big fat zero. Mention the saucers and this whole town runs a zipper right through their lips. They're sick of it, Vic. The publicity, it makes us all out to be fools. Oh, that's too pat. They're not tired or resentful. They're just frightened. They're frightened of something they claim they've never seen. Claim? They haven't seen any flying saucers. Oh, but they have. I know they have. Vic, why are you so excited about this? Well, I'm a newspaper man. Just a good story, that's all. It seems to me this is more than just a good story to you. Prove that flying saucers exist. Why? Because I know they exist. Okay. Wait a minute, Ginny. Look, just trust me. Will you believe in me? You're right. It, it is more than just a story. Has to be. You're not a newspaper man. Hey, don't tell me you've been through my suitcase, too. Well, you haven't got a typewriter. I took a stab at that, and little I know about you. I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Don't get sore. I shouldn't have made that crack to me. <laughs> Maybe I was sticking my nose where it doesn't belong. Hey, it's kind of a nice nose for a nose. Hey! <laughs> You said you was going to stay right there and not move, and you did. You moved. Can't trust nobody about nothing no more. Look, look, look what I brung you. Surprise you, don't it? It's a piece of one of their saucers. The Indian gave it to me. One of them blew up right near his place. Wasn't nothing left but smoke. And this. There's nothing but just a piece of steel. Steel? <laughs> Man, that's what you're looking for. Is this your proof? This? You want to know? I've seen with my own eyes. You're talking gibberish. See, she's scared. She's scared too. They're all scared they're going to end up like the Indian did. He's mad, Vic. You can't take his word against the Toms. His word and mine. Two of us who swear we've seen flying saucers. What about the rest of the world? They'd believe it too if they knowed about the Indian and the reporter from Frisco. Made it look like an accident. Vic, he's mad. Everybody Wait a minute, he's... wait a minute. Let's hear him out. No. Not until you heard me out. Vic, you came here to talk to responsible people about the flying saucers. All right, I'd buy that. It's a worthy aim. But know something. Every flying saucer story that's come out of Las Palmas has come from one source. One source only. Hey, is that right? Right? Sure. Sure it's right. I had to. Everybody else was scared. Guess I'm just about the town's only reporter. Only reporter? Wait a minute. I didn't tell you about the Indian and the reporter from Frisco. You leave him alone. Why? <laughs> Getting sweet on him? Afraid he's going to get hurt? You leave him alone or get out of my house. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I knew you were going to find out about the flying saucer story sooner or later. I didn't want you up on a cloud when it happened. <laughs> Don't believe me either, do you? You think I'm crazy, huh? Crazy Vic and Crazy John, the flying saucer boys. Please, Vic, stop it. Now, wait a minute, Jenny. Listen to me. All right, maybe I was taken in by a crazy old man who showed me a hunk of steel. Okay. But, Jenny, I know what I saw, and I saw a flying saucer. 
Not just something way over yonder behind a hill. Not just a streak of light on a dark sky. Not just a creation of a sick mind that was molded into the shape of a saucer. I saw it, Jenny. It was close enough to reach out and touch. There it was at my wingtip, then back at my tail. Up and down, all around the plane. Jenny, this thing was trying to fight me. It was, it was trying to destroy me. I can't be wrong about that. Nobody can tell me I'm wrong. All right, Vic. If you say it, I believe it. I believe you, darling. And now, before we go on with our drama, let's take a look at uh, another kind of drama from the world of yesterday, the days of dueling and the famous Count of Monte Cristo. Yes, men lived daringly, dramatically in Monte Cristo's time. So now Chrysler takes designs from Monte Cristo's times to bring you dramatic new ideas and watchbands. Here in Chrysler's unique pistol box, you see one of the fabulous Monte Cristo watchbands for men. This rich-looking jewel crest is just one of the new styles in Chrysler's Monte Cristo bands. Yes, it brings a costly jewelry look to your watch. And imagine what this brilliant band will do, not only for your watch, but for your appearance. This magnificent jeweled crest is typical of Chrysler craftsmanship. Here is another Monte Cristo design using a royal crown. Best of all, Chrysler's Monte Cristo watch bands cost no more than many ordinary bands, only $12.95 tax included. And all Chrysler bands have super calibrated seven coil springs for extra expansion, extra flexibility. So buy the Chrysler Monte Cristo at your jeweler. Make your watch look better than new with Chrysler. And now for the last act of the search for the flying saucer, starring Jack Cotter. It's open. Oh, I thought you might still be up. Would you go for some coffee? Yeah, I guess I would. I'll do better than that. I'll get it for you. Ginny. Ginny, darling. Vic. Vic, why must it be this way? You, you said you loved me. You, you came into my life and turned everything upside down, and now you're going away. Why? Honey, I, I try to explain all that. Three hours ago, you held me in your arms and said you felt as if you'd found a home. You said you loved me and then, and then said not to get involved, that you were leaving in the morning. I think I have a right to ask why. Honey, you've got every right to know. It's about time you knew something about me. I know enough. I know I love you. Here, wait a minute. Hey, look at this. Recognize that? Army flight cap. Special War Department orders. Reassignment. What it really means is they figure any guy who's seen too many flying saucers, maybe he's a little air happy, so they figure the best thing is to keep him on the ground. Okay, you were grounded by the Air Corps. Big deal. Big deal it is to me. Flying's my whole life and they won't let me fly. I will, Vic. Honey, tell them it was all a mistake. Oh, I can't, I can't. What can you do? Tell me, I'd really like to know. I can prove that the saucers exist. That's what I can do. Vic, how can you find saucers when there are none? But there are. There are saucers. There are hundreds of them. Here, look at this. Flying saucer stories. Spreading from coast to coast over the last four years. Here, doctors, scientists, chemists, housewives. Here, look at this. A dozen kids in Spokane, Washington. Sure, we saw the saucers. A dozen of them flying in formation. Here, look at this. A restaurant owner in Mojave, California. Don't tell me it was a jet. This thing moved faster than any jet I ever saw. A minister in Boston. Here, four fishermen in San Francisco. And seven reports from right here in Las Palmas. I tell you, they've all seen saucers. They've all swear they've seen them. And Ginny, I swear it too. mentioned something about coffee. I didn't want to change your mind.
Hey, you going someplace? I told you you'd say I was crazy. Would you like to catch a glimpse of a flying saucer? <laughs> flying saucer? <laughs> you mean another one of your pieces of steel? Oh, forget that. I don't know you wouldn't have good enough sense to appreciate that. Nobody does but me and the Indian. He seen him, the Indian did. He chased one halfway across the field and up a cliff. Then they found him killed. Can I make a trek with me? They landed another one tonight. Can't see it from here, but if we was to go up by the Indian shack and talk to Maria, then that's it, we could talk to Maria. Well, wait a Come minute, in. wait a minute, let me tell Jenny. No, 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 she, she, she'll just talk you out of it like she did before. Come in and stay. Okay, let's go. the old man. I think you'd better come right over here. Man, are you getting tired? This here's Jack. Here's my niece. She's now on 80 years old. See that hill over there? That hill? That's where they lie, land the saucers and pull them back into a cave. No, I can't see nothing. Must have pulled it back into the cave already. Maria, you got company. Maria. Maria. Must have come and got her. First the Indian, and the reporter from Frisco. Now, Maria, all of us who've seen the saucers, they come get us, one by one. Oh, now, listen, old man, this is twice in one night you threw a sucker pitch and I went fighting for it. Now, what's the idea of dragging me up here? There's nobody lived here. There's nobody lived in a shack for years. Them ashes, they ain't more than a couple hours cold, wouldn't you say? I warned Maria it was dangerous living here alone so close to that cave. She never existed except in your twisted mind. Twisted mind, huh? Is that what the army said about you? Now look, the Indian knows this whole area like a man knows his own backyard. Ain't it kind of strange he should all of a sudden fall off in the cliff? Strange no one believes that story but you. I didn't believe it neither. I got me some groceries and I made me a trek up there. Oh, now, wait a minute. You got some groceries and you made a trek up here? With no help at all, with that leg? Now listen, old man, now I've look. got a... I wasn't born with this bad leg. Fourteen months ago, somebody shoved me off in a cliff. Jenny. Hey, it's 5 a.m. Why aren't you asleep? Are you You're going back there? Back where? How do you know where he took me? Oh, Vic, stop it. Please stop it. You sound just like him. Do you think that old idiot ever blabbered about anything but that Indian and his wife and, and... Then there was an Indian. An old man. An old man who died six months ago of, of a heart attack or, or old age. <laughs> At the foot of a cliff at 2 o'clock in the morning? That's yeah. Crazy John's story. Yeah, well, maybe, but it won't hurt to look into it. Anyhow, we're going to get some grub and some horses, and we'll go up there and find out. Then if there's a cave, if there's concrete evidence, great. If not, I'll just have to start and look somewhere else. Vic, please, for me, please don't go with him. Why? Why not? I don't want you to. It might be dangerous. Only madmen see the saucers, but they're dangerous. There's nothing out in those hills, but the hills are dangerous. Yes. I can't buy that. The only way I can hurt myself is by not seeing this thing through. Any other way, I could never live with myself. Jenny, I've got to find out. Then, then I can't stop you. No, you can't. 
But I'll be back, Jenny, and so help me if this long shot comes through. If John's story is right, it'll mean a new world for me, for you, for, for the both of us. If I can get some proof, some concrete evidence, some real documents that these saucers have been landing. I know they have. They've been landing here for the last three years, landing and discharging passengers. And where are they? Here in Las Palmas, filtered all over America. You really believe that, don't you? I don't know, Jenny, but I'll find out. I'll find out a lot of things. I'll find out why they come here. Who sent them? What's behind all this? Who wants them here? Jenny, I'll find out a lot of things. Yes, yes, you will. You know something? I could really fall in love with a girl like you. Well? I couldn't stop him. He's beaten us. Nonsense. Be a simple matter to dispose of them. What about the others? What others? You don't understand. Vic's not alone. There are hundreds of them, thousands of him. You're mad. I'm mad enough to save us. Mad enough to see what you and I and the rest of our planet couldn't see. We underestimated them. Their world is full of Vic Russo's. Full of fools who, who chase dreams over dark mountains and discover the truth. Kill one and another takes his place. We didn't understand them. We didn't realize their strength and their courage. You're trying to save them. I'm trying to save us. We thought he was a blithering idiot, but we're wrong. He knows. He knows the truth. He knows nothing. You're wrong. That piece of metal the old man gave him. You said he'd thrown it away. He sent it to his commanding officer with a report. If he's found dead, if he disappears, they'll believe his story. This place will crawl with soldiers. You're lying. I warn you. If you're lying to save him, if you've fallen in love with him, they I... They didn't send us here to fall in love. I'm telling you the truth. Get ready to leave. We're pulling out. Must... Must I go with you? Need you ask? We're leaving in half an hour. Thank you. 